Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. There are a lot of times when we pray for people, we don't think of certain things. Just like a surgeon, when he gets ready to do surgery, he has to sanitize extremely. Yes. Now, when you are ready to pray for someone and intercede, you sanitize. Sanitize your heart, mind, soul, spirit, your life. Because you have to make sure that you're not passing on demonic control over a person's health. One time I was in the hospital and I had a guy and his wife come and pray for me. Maybe three or four days later, I had that same guy and a church member come and pray for me. Would you believe both of those times I had to battle demons all night long right there in ICU? Constantly waking up, battling demons, going to sleep, battling demons, dreaming, battling demons. And at that point, I said, if he ever comes in my room or ever comes around me, I'm going to ex explain to him, don't ever lay hands on me or anyone else until you're filled with the Holy Ghost. See, there are times you have to be very careful. He meant well, but he wasn't filled with the Holy Ghost. That was quite evident throughout the years. So you have to be very careful. Sometimes people have a spirit of religion or they really believe in going to church or they really, you know, they're one of those people Jesus talks about that says, uh, uh, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, but won't enter into the kingdom of heaven. So you have to be careful who you allow to pray for you. Know them that labor among you. Don't guess around it. Know them that labor among you or make sure you know people who do know them well because you want to make sure the prayers are doing you good. Another thing to always pray, and I didn't think to pray it when he was praying for me. I, I wouldn't have done battle if I had done this. If someone is praying for you, before they lay hands on you, you bind, you say in the name of Jesus, I bind all transference of demons. So these are little clues we need to do to help protect ourselves. It's called spiritual armor, spiritual protection, spiritual warfare. All right. So you bind any transference of demons. You bind any transference of curses. Mm -hmm. You do everything. You command all evil to stay as far away from you as the east is from the west. You have to cover yourself in every way, shape, or form. I cover myself in the blood of Jesus. I ask you, Lord, to surround me with your guardian, warring, ministering angels 24-7 from this day forth for the rest of my life. You have to take authority. Your heart's doing a little dance called AFib, whatever the case may be, or heart palpitations. Don't dial 911 before you first utter out of your mouth. I command my heart to beat regularly in the name of Jesus. Then if you feel, go on and dial 911, wherever your faith is. But take authority. Tell your body what to and what not to do. You're starting to feel a little twinge in your upper left arm. Yeah. Command your heart not to have a heart attack. I rebuke heart attack in the name of Jesus. See, one of the things a lot of us forget as born-again Christians is how much authority the name of Jesus has given us. What we have through Christ Jesus. What we have in the Holy Spirit. We forget the power that we ha that we carry within, the arsenal that we have. We forget that. It's like that old song, are we walking into the enemy's camp, laying our weapons down, mm -mm. shedding our armor as we go, leaving it on the ground. We've got to be strong in the power of his might. Prove to the enemy we are the army of the Lord, and we won the victory. So you don't go in, do -do 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 -do. what do I do, what do I do, where do I go? No. You go in prepared. You go in prepared for battle. God's got your back and he's got your front. He's got you on all sides. 
But you must open your mouth and speak that stuff. The power is in the tongue. The power of life and death is in the tongue. What are you speaking over yourself? When you go into a particular office and you're asking God for favor, do you open your mouth and say, you can't do that for me, can you? Or do you say, when can you do this for me? I need this done as soon as possible. Do you go under the authority and the unction of the Holy Spirit? Or do you go wimpy with your little tail tucked between your legs in total fear? See, a lot of things don't happen in our lives because of where we stand spiritually. Sometimes you've been intimidated so long that you live under a cloud of fear. So, you must take authority. And when you know that you're loaded with fear, acknowledge that. Don't lie about it. Tell God, Lord, I have too much fear in me. I don't like living like this. You told me, fear not. You told me, be courageous. You told me to use my authority. You told me to do this, to go in and possess. Well, Lord, I can't do that loaded with fear. So please heal me of everything that has caused me to be so fearful. Heal me of everything that has made me so easily intimidated. So much we must cover in prayer before we even ask for what we really want. Mm -hmm. It's like that surgeon doing the scrub before he does surgery. Before he gets in and does what he's got to do, sometimes he's got to go through his medical library and refresh his memory on some things. Some of y'all got to go through God's Word and refresh your memory as to what you have at your disposal through God through Christ Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost that lies within. Okay. Well, that's a little pep talk. I hope that strengthened you and encouraged you. God bless you. Toodles.